Hey guys, Dylan Liu here. Welcome to my channel and this is the second episode of my Blender tutorial series. Firstly, I have to say thank you to all you amazing people who kindly supported this channel since the last video. I'm so glad that you guys like it and I will keep polishing future videos based on your feedback. So this time I will be teaching you how to make this thruster flame effect procedurally. Apparently, the inspiration comes from rocket thrusters in real life, but here I want to make it look more sci-fi by turning it into some pulses and particles. The particle look is actually faked using procedural shaders, and the base mesh is just a cone or cylinder which is deformed by modifiers. So we're gonna set up the shader first, then add some modifiers to the mesh, and do the animation in the end. The only add-on needed in this tutorial is the Node Wrangler, which will help us speed up our workflow of the Node setup. The blend file is available on my Gumroad for people who don't have time to go through the tutorial, or you can just grab it to see my exact setup if you want. Let's start with the simple cylinder. Get into the edit mode, delete its top and bottom faces, then shrink the top loop to make it look like a cone. Also shorten its height to about half along the z-axis. For the sake of making this tutorial, I will adjust the geometry using the dimensions I think look the best in my previous scene, and I highly recommend you to use the same scale and dimensions that I'm showing on the screen right now, because this procedural shader heavily relies on the texture coordinate of the object. If your object's dimensions are totally different from mine, your shader result will probably look very different throughout the entire process. So to avoid any potential confusion, let's stay on the same page when you do it for the first time. You can come back to change the parameters as you like after you finish the this tutorial and got a better understanding of this node setup. Give it a new material, then go to the material properties panel and change the blend mode to alpha clip. Now delete everything except the material output in the shader editor. As always, let's start with the texture coordinate and use the object output. We want to cut some layers along the z-axis, so add a separate xyz node to get the z-value. It is worth mentioning here, the separate xyz is using the object's local space instead of the global, which means that when we rotate the object later on, the local z-axis will be rotated as well. And that's exactly what we want. So make sure you do not control A to normalize the object's rotation at any stage. Otherwise, you will mess up everything we created based on the local xyz space. Now use a math node with add operation to control the position of this boundary between black and white. Then add another math node with multiply operation to make the top brighter which will also make the boundary sharper. Now this boundary line looks like a perfect circle, so we want to make it more random and natural by adding some noises. Create Musgrave texture to get some randomness on the surface, and use the texture coordinate object output as the vector. Combine this random pattern with our previous perfect boundary line using a math node with add operation, so we get a natural looking pattern between black and white. Now let's start making this pattern look like some kind of particles. Add a noise texture with a large scale and detail. Plug the object into the vector as well. Combine the noise texture and the Musgrave texture using another math node with add operation. Check the clamp to normalize the result. So now we got a blurry particle look. In order to make the pattern more complex and interesting, we want to cut more than one layer along the z-axis. Since we already created this boundary pattern, we can simply duplicate everything and tweak this add operation so we get another boundary pattern on a slightly different location. Here I would recommend to delete this noise texture on the second boundary and change some of the parameters so its pattern will look a little bit different from the first one. Now it's time to combine these two patterns so we can cut three layers along the z-axis on this cone. Instead of using a simple add operation, which doesn't give us more layers as we expected, we choose the logarithm operation. Don't ask me why, it's math, you know? All that matters is that it gives us this interesting pattern. So far, with this complex node setup, we only generated one pattern to use, which feels like a waste of effort, 
Ideally, we can use this node setup as a base and grow more patterns on top of it. So we can output multiple patterns and use them as different masks in different places. I will give you an example here. You can grow as many patterns as you like using similar methods. It's actually pretty simple. Just add more math nodes after the previous node setup. For example, we use another add operation after this logarithm node and combine it with the first boundary line we created at the beginning. Then in between, we use the multiply operation but change the second value to be negative. In this way, we inverted the black and white and generated a whole new pattern. Now you can see, we can actually output three different patterns to use as controllers for the colors and transparency that we are going to create next. Alright, enough playing around with these boring black and white patterns. Let's add in some colors. Create an emission shader first and use the color ramp to control the RGB value. Here you can choose any color you want, but I recommend setting up at least two colors, like light blue and dark blue, to make it look more interesting. Now we can see the two colors are just mixed evenly, but what we actually want is to make the colors change gradually along the z-axis. So we are going to borrow the z-value from the previous separate xyz node and plug it into the factor of the color ramp. Also, we can use a math node with add operation to adjust the boundary between the two colors. In order to achieve the particle look, add a transparent node and combine it with the emission using a mix shader. We are going to create another noise pattern to break this cone into small pieces. Add a noise texture with the parameters you like and plug the object output from the texture coordinates to the vector slot. Now we are going to use the same old trick to control the thickness and the sharpness of the noises. Add a color burn and a color dodge after the noise texture. Change the second color of the color burn to be black and the second color of the color dodge to be white. Tweak the two factors to get the thickness and sharpness as you like. Now we can use this noise pattern as the factor to control the emission's transparency. So far, we already created the patterns, as well as the fractured emission. We can finally generate the thruster flame. Use another mix shader to combine the emission node and the transparent node, and use one of those patterns as the factor. Boom! We get the particle flame. If this shader looks fine to you at this stage, you can stop here and move on to the next part, which is the mesh deformation. But if you look carefully at my render demo, you can see some tiny green particles among the blue ones. That was me mixing another layer of fractured emission using another of those patterns we created previously. Simply duplicate the pair of emission and transparent nodes, but this time we just want pure green particles so we don't need the color ramp anymore. Also duplicate another pair of noise texture and musgrave texture. Change the parameters accordingly. Instead of using a simple add operation, let's do something new. Change it to the greater than operation. You can see we generated some kind of tiny particles again. Use this as the factor of the mix shader, and we are done with the green particles. Now, go back to those old patterns we created before, choose a different one and use it as the factor to mix the new green particles with the transparent node. In the end, we can simply use an add shader to combine the green particles with the blue ones. You can tweak any parameters to adjust the overall look of the particles, and we're going to do the second part, which is to non-destructively deform the mesh of the object using modifiers. First, we want to give this simple cone some thickness, so we add a solidify modifier with a reasonable thickness value. In order to deform the shape of the cone, we need to have enough polygons to work with, so add a subdivision modifier and change the levels to 2. You can go higher with this value, but I think 2 is enough considering the cost of performance if your scene is very complex. Now we can use a displace modifier to do the deformation. Create a new texture, change the tab to distorted noise with the Voronoid F1 distortion. Leave the other parameters as default for now. Go back to the displace modifier, then shrink the strength and the mid level, so the clipping doesn't look too crazy. Here if you change the viewport to the render view, you will probably see the bloom going crazy. Don't panic, just go to the render settings in EV, set a clamp value like 20, problem solved. This is to cap your bloom intensity under a reasonable level. 
I'm pretty happy with what we have created so far, but we can do better to improve the visual to a whole new level. Duplicate this mesh, shrink it along the X and Y axis, then stretch it along the Z axis. We're done. Yup, we just created another cone with a slightly different shape, but it gives the flame more depth. From here, you can tweak the inner mesh further, like shrinking the size of its top loop, so the top looks sharper. Now it's time to do the animation as the last part of this tutorial. To make the particles move like some kind of poses, we just need to add a wave modifier. You can tweak the parameters if you want, but I'm just gonna leave them as default and only increase the speed to a higher value, so it moves faster. You can do the same wave modifier on the inner mesh as well, but change the time offset a little bit, so the two parts will pose differently along the timeline. Another place where you can keyframe to animate the look of the particles is this texture in the Displace modifier. Keyframe is a mount on the first frame of the timeline. Then use the trick I showed you in the previous tutorial. Go to the graph editor and select the keyframed value, then add a noise modifier with the parameters you like. We can also go back to the shader editor and animate some of the patterns we generated before. For example, the scale value of this Musgrave texture, and this add operation which controls the position of the black and white boundary. Use the same noise modifier trick in the graph editor, your thruster flame will come alive. When you play back and watch this animated thing we just made, it looks really weird and abstract. That's because it alone literally means nothing. You have to put it into a specific scene to give some context to the audience, then people will understand. Oh look, that's the flame generated from a thruster. As always, I hope you find this tutorial informative to you, and if you learned something, please consider supporting my channel by like and subscribe. I really appreciate your help as a small YouTuber. Also please feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions regarding any issues you may have. Alright, stay safe and always be creative guys, I will see you in the next one.